Okay, this is Elmer Keith's load of what used to be called H2400. And we're going to pick them off one at a time. Oops. Hi, George here, and welcome to Tales from Target Suite, where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting. And we'll spend some time at the range, and every now and then we'll reconvene out in my shop back in Houston, or here at the farm in Louisiana, where I'll build some fun projects, and we'll share an adventure or two that'll make even a grown man smile and boy am I smiling today because I have the what I consider a rare privilege of shooting a beautiful classic handgun and it is the Smith & Wesson model 29 and this one is from 1979 is that not gorgeous And yes, I want to thank my friend Ryan for loaning me this, this revolver. It, uh, I think he got it from his dad. And this is a 6-inch model because in 1979, <laughs> Smith & Wesson converted from the 6.5-inch, which was the Dirty Harry Model 29, to the 6-inch revolver to make it a little bit more, I guess, to make it a little bit more um, carryable. If you think an almost 4-pound pistol or a revolver can be carryable. But in any case, it is a gorgeous firearm and filled with history. But I want to, uh, well, I want to do a little bit of, uh, of housekeeping here. And uh, first and foremost, we're going to do some of this video is going to be shot from back in Houston because for the last two days, my son and I have been working feverishly to get things lined out so that we can go to SHOT Show this year or next year in January of 2021 and so we got all of that taken care of and it uh, took up some of the time that I would have spent doing this work and so I'm going to do some some FaceTime back in Houston we'll fill in the blanks but it'll all fit together because of the magic of editing and the other thing I want to talk about if, if you were if you saw my last video you know that we've had a problem with pigs and I actually brought three pigs that I killed right back here just below the 200 what we call the 200 yard target and uh, and I just left them here one day one pig one each day for three days I left them here for um, for them to be recycled and in every case the pigs disappeared overnight each one of them and uh, and I made some kind of silly remark about not believing in Bigfoot and then we sh I showed you some footage of a UFO sighting that I actually filmed. And so if you haven't seen that video first, I think you need to check this out wherever it is. But then also I became aware of something that's crucial to share with you guys. And um, I found out that my cousin is actually responsible because he, he has a company called Bigfoot Services. And so if there are things that you need that could only be accomplished by Bigfoot, my cousin can help. And just so that he is not overwhelmed with phone calls, I have actually covered up the, the um, area code. So uh, I hope he appreciates that. But anyway, of course, I'm kidding about all that. But he did bring me, my cousin did bring me this sign after, <laughs> after he saw that video. And, um, and I thought it was hilarious. But anyway, I'm going to do a little bit more shooting here. I'm going to set up some more targets. And uh, man, was that, sh was that uh, slow motion awesome. Uh, it's no wonder that people called this 44 Magnum the most powerful handgun 
in the world back in 1959, because it was in 1959. And uh, we can thank Elmer Keith, as I said, for uh, pushing the powers that be to, uh, to actually introduce both this firearm and also the 44 Magnum cartridge. But let's shoot a little bit more, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the history of the Smith & Wesson Model 29. Okay, again today I'm shooting hand loads, and these are, these are hand loads with Hornady XTP bullets. And we are using A2400, and we've got Starline Brass, because I like Starline Brass, as you guys know. Now, I'm going to do another, uh, take care of another little bit of business of, uh, um, of housekeeping. And uh, that is because I had, a, had uh, one of the guys in the comments said, well, I wish you'd shoot a, a, um, a, a bowling pin and see how it would work. And so I have a rather historic bowling pin here, historic from the perspective of Target Suite. And if you guys have watched, I think it was my fourth or fifth video, you saw me talking about this bowling pin. It was a birthday party for race at the main event. And I shot this bowling pin with my dictator mortar with a giant steel ball that weighed, uh, I forget how many, how heavy that steel ball was, but it was gigantic and very heavy. And so we're gonna shoot this same bowling pin that, uh, that I featured in that video and gave homage to Race and happy birthday, Race, if you're watching this video, that birthday party that apparently the bowling pin didn't make it to. And I'm gonna go down there and set this up and we're gonna shoot it with the 44 Magnum with the, 100, with the um, 240 grain XTP bullet from Hornady. Let's see. Let's see what makes the biggest splash. Blast soda or Dr. Thunder? Okay, I've got three hand loads with uh, Starline Brass and a 240 grain XTP bullets from Hornady and a uh, moderately aggressive charge of Unique. And we're gonna see what we can do with those three water jugs down there. We've got a, we've got a one gallon on either side and a two and a half gallon turned lengthwise in the middle. And so we'll see what these uh, 240 grain XTPs can do with the uh, 44 Magnum with those water jugs. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the history of the Smith & Wesson Model 29. Okay, there's a mystery that we're going to need to solve here. And in order to do that, I've got to give you a little bit of history, but we're going to do this pretty quick because I want to get back to shooting. But this is a Model 29-2. And uh, the Model 20, the original Smith & Wesson 44 Magnum was called just that, the Smith & Wesson 44 Magnum. It was introduced in 1955. It was the brainchild and, and came to fruition because of the energies of a really enig enigmatic man named Elmer Keith. I'm going to put a link in the video in the description below 
to a, a video that Hickok 45 did, a tribute to Elmer Keith. And so I really hope you guys, when you leave here, will go take a look at that video. It's from, actually from 10 years ago. And personally, um, Hickok 45 is kind of my modern day Elmer Keith. He hasn't developed any firearms to my knowledge, but he is a, a real stalwart in the uh, gun industry, especially if you're a YouTuber. And so they were introduced to the model in 1955. And then uh, five years later, or actually in 1957, they started the uh, Model 29 designation with the dash zero. There was actually no, z no zero behind the dash number, but that was a dash zero. In 1961, they came out the dash one, which had an ejector rod change, reversed the threads. And then in 1960, uh, that was in 1960. And then in 1961, they came out with the dash two, which is what this is. And I can show you if the camera will pick it up in focus. You can barely see the dash, the dash two designation on the bottom. There it is, 29-2. And the early 60,000 serial number confirms it's a dash two. And then in 1982, they went to the dash three. Now keep in mind, this is a 1979 version that predates the, the dash three changes. And so what happened in 1982 is they removed the pin, the barrel retaining pin, and they removed the recesses on the face of the cylinder. And the recesses are actually, they actually allow the, the round ch to chamber all the way down to where the back of the, of, the, of the round is actually flush with the face of the cylinder. And so there is the barrel pin, and I would show you the recessed cylinders, but they are not there. And so this is a pinned, but not recessed, Model 29. And so when you put a bullet in, a loaded round, the rounds are actually proud of the back of the cylinder. Now, I don't know if there is a Smith & Wesson explanation for that, or is that explanation going to have to come from Ryan and his family? But uh, hopefully we'll figure out why this is a pinned but not recessed Smith & Wesson Model 29. But just taking a look, isn't this a gorgeous uh, revolver? It is just gorgeous. And it has seen very little. It has seen very little use. Okay, let's head back to the range and wrap this thing up. All right, let's get let's get set up on the chronograph and and uh, we'll record some velocities here. Okay, here we go. The first three shots are going to be the um, the moderate loads of unique powder, 240 grain jacketed hollow point, 400 XTP, and then the second three are going to be the the Keith load of A2400 behind the jacketed the 240 grain jacketed hollow point. Okay, the first three bullets are going to be the uh, moderate load of, of uh, Unique, and then the second three bullets are going to be the Keith load of A2400 behind the 240 grain jacketed bullet, not cast bullet. Eleven forty-one. Eleven ninety nine, twelve thirteen, and these should be the A twenty four hundred. 
1278. And I got an error on that one. Let's do another one. Twelve sixty four. All right, I got both ears in this time. I got a little ahead of myself there with trying to shoot that double action because like I said, I have spent so little time behind a revolver over the last, uh, gosh, year and a half, year and four months that I started uh, YouTube. And, uh, and so I hit it a little bit high, didn't get down really into the water and didn't cause a big explosion. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I wanna say thanks and, um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.